this one really is interesting to me. The 49ers, they, you know, never will come out and just verbally commit to Trey Lance. They drafted Trey. They traded three picks to get him. He's clearly their guy. Kyle's right. hanging out with him in the offseason. Why would it? Why can't they just say, you know what? Trey's our guy. We're going with Trey. And that's it. It's like, it's weird. Right. It's like he hasn't done enough on the field. He hasn't given them enough indications. They're trying to dangle the carrot. I'm not sure what it is, but they don't. It's like at this point, it's not accidental. It's on yeah. purpose. John doesn't say it. Jed doesn't say it. Kyle doesn't say it. I've never heard anybody associated with the Niners say, come out and just say, you know what? We drafted Trey. Trey's our guy. Absolutely. He's our guy going forward. And, and people would say, well, they don't need to say it. I think you do need to say it. I think it, I think it would benefit uh, the franchise to say uh, Trey's our guy. And they, for whatever reason, never get to that point. And I'm not sure why. What do you think? Well, last year they said Jimmy's our starting quarterback. Trey's our guy for the future. This year they don't say anything. I mean, they they don't know who the starting quarterback is. And they keep trying to compare themselves. They keep trying to buy themselves time. They're like, well, you know, Mahomes sat for a year. Aaron Rodgers sat for three years. Well, Mahomes and Rodgers were like falling in the draft. And I believe the Chiefs traded up to 10. They saw an opportunity. Uh, the, the, The Packers just had Rodgers fall in their laps. The Niners traded up to three. It was one of the most expensive draft day trades ever for a quarterback. And when you do that, you're thinking, man, like, this team is real. What a confident move. Right. This team loves Trey Lance way more than anyone. And as soon as he's got in the building, all that confidence that we assumed they had based on the trade has never been expressed ever again. How do you do that? How do you not show confidence? You have to. But how do you not do that? I don't get that at all. I mean – the only it creates the perception that they think he's not good. It creates or that, that he's shown something that yeah. would make them have doubts. Exactly. And if you it don't does. want to have that idea out there, all you got to do is say, you know what? Trey's our guy. We love everything about him and we're going forward with him and he's number one. But they just never really get there. I'm not sure why. I'm not sure if it's because they wanted to flirt with Brady or if there was other options out there and they they don't believe that Trey's quite ready. I'm not really sure. I guess their actions saying Sudfeld is the backup, that must tell you that Trey's a stud because if Sudfeld, if you feel comfortable that you're one hard hit away from Nate Sudfeld, you must be in love with Trey. But why can't you say it? Why, they Just never, go, ever express it. Go back to, what the, to the Niners template here, the Patrick Mahomes situation. What the Chiefs did – was uh, transitioned to Holmes immediately in his in yeah. his second year. They traded Alex Smith first thing in the offseason so they could use the cap space to get Sammy Watkins and make a big push with Patrick Mahomes. They weren't like, well, we don't we need to see a little bit more from Patrick. They're like, no, we believe in him. Sure, it's only been one start in practices, but we made it, we made a big investment. We've developed him for a year. We freaking believe in him. And the Niners are like, we're not taking that leap of faith. You took the leap of faith when you made the trade. Now you can't take the leap of faith by making him a starter. You shouldn't have made the trade then. To me, you shouldn't have made the trade if you weren't willing to, to finish the leap of faith because they only took half of it. And the players are kind of caught in between because they get the mics in their face every day. Hey, what do you think? What do you think? And they don't want to say anything wrong, but there's no – they would just piggyback the leadership of the team. If yeah. the leadership of the team came out and said, you know what, Trey's our guy, they would say, you know what, it's pretty clear from listening to Shanahan that Trey's our guy. But they can't even say that. Yeah, so they could do that last year. Like, I gotta okay, hit the fan here. I gotta hit the fan. It's all right because the last year it was real clear. The Niners made a had a clear um, narrative. It's Jimmy's team for one more year. Last dance with Jimmy, and so every player could could just parrot that. Now it's like I don't know, man. Get back to me. That's a bad one. And this is all a lack of communication and a lack of a clear. I mean, I don't know. I mean, honestly. I don't think they know who the starting quarterback is. It's not my best guess here is that Kyle is just really. The Niners are all about, I mean, from Jed to Parag to Kyle, they want to have the data first. There's no data on Trey. You got to take a leap of faith. That's why you traded for him. There's no data on him. And that scares them very much. That's it. And I I think also he's probably like a lot of rookie quarterbacks. He's showing you glimpses and then huge inconsistencies and either the conviction's not there that that they know what he is or they're just really kind of playing their cards very close to the vest and that kind of I, I do get a sense when I'm around the Niners that there is everybody's wired super tight 
And I don't know who drives the intensity in that organization. I don't know if it's Parag. I don't know if it's, you know, I don't know who it is. I don't know if it's Jed. I don't know if it's uh, Lynch. But everybody's wired very tight around there. They don't seem loose. They don't seem confident. They are. They look like paranoid and looking over their shoulder. That's what I see. And I'm looking at, I'm just talking about employees of the team. I mean, I'm talking about guys who are, you know, you ask them a question and it's like, I got to look around to see who's around here before I can give you an answer. So that makes me kind of like, well, why are you guys so tight? You've been to two NFC championship games in the last three years. You've been to the Super Bowl. I think most people would say that Shanahan and Lynch are a pretty decent regime. Why is everybody so tight down there? I'm not really sure why. Well, if they have a big secret that Trey Lance isn't good, then that's a, then that's a big problem. Because that could be right, it. But I've seen Trey Lance in training camp. I like Trey Lance in training camp. I think they're just being scared of the unknown. Maybe I'm wrong. I think they're being scared of the unknown, unwilling to finish the leap of faith that they started, which is pretty weak. But I guess we'll have to see. Yeah, time's going to tell on this one. I, you yeah. know, I, you know, I'll say this: if you look at Trey's highlight reel, oh, it's like incredible. I mean, some of those t- highlights that get released from uh, camp, you know, incredible. Um, but also, you can see there's work to be done. But still, he's your guy. Everybody knows it. I wonder if it's just they're just don't want to make any strong statements about Trey because they're trying desperately on this side to get Jimmy moved. And if they say Trey's our guy, maybe that's used against them in that's some weird way by other teams going, well, that's Trey's their point. guy. So they yeah. got to cut Jimmy. If oh, so Jimmy's a backup. Here's a six round pick for Jimmy Garoppolo. Right. So if they maybe don't say it. Trey's our guy, then maybe they think they can get something more in a trade for Jimmy. But what I, I, that's I like the only thing that makes sense. Right. I think you're right. I think that's exactly what it is. But I would, what I'd like to say directly to Jed, John, Kyle, all of you, um, in doing this, you are creating the perception that you don't like Trey Lance, and that's very detrimental to your team. So I don't think it's going to work. You keep holding out to get that third or second round pick for Jimmy Garoppolo. It hasn't come. You need for the good of Trey Lance, his development, your locker room, the future of the franchise. Commit to him. Say, go on, come on our radio show right here, Larry Kruger and Cone, and say that Trey Lance is your starting quarterback. Otherwise... It's going to be hanging over the team for, until John Lynch talks at his po- uh, pre-draft press conference in a month. Get out you can tell the players don't want to talk about it because they know that there's it, it, there's something more there, and they don't want to even get involved. So you heard what – I'll tell you the one thing I didn't like from Ray Ray McLeod is Wait. I don't like players who sign for money. I like players who sign because they want to win. Uh, obviously, money's a part of it. But when Ray Ray McLeod's like, well, whatever quarterback's there is fine with me, it's like, tell me you're there to play with Trey Lance. You know, that yes. to me, I want to hear that. I don't want to hear you say, well, uh, I'm just here for the cash. I mean, he didn't say that directly. But when you're like, any quarterback Kyle throws out there is fine with me, it kind of plays like I'm getting mine. Uh, you know, that's not my concern. That should be your primary concern. This is the guy throwing you the rock. Why well, do you think all those guys re-signed in Tampa? It's because of Tom Brady. Well, so, maybe the you know, 49ers felt they couldn't be that active in free agency because every free agent would be like, sure, sure, yeah, cool, cool. Well, who's your quarterback? And they're like, about that. Uh, we're going to figure that out down yeah. the line. We I'm like, okay, I'm going to the Chargers then. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. says, how many special teams and backups are we going to keep signing? <laughs> no-name players, K1 Williams. Cut Jimmy Garoppolo and bring in real talent. K1 was cheap. Two years, seven million. They didn't bring him back just so you could get younger. Okay, well. Niner Nation crushed, not Niner Nation, the website, but Niner's Twitter, let's say, um, crushed K1 Williams. How quickly people forget the value of K1 Williams. K1 Williams was maybe your, your best run player. He's got more heart than, than yeah. you know, every person put together. I mean, this guy's small, diminutive, and he'll put his head in there. He'll blow people up. Yep. Uh, he lost a step in coverage last year, and he had some some lingering injuries. And, yeah, his price tag was a little high, so I have no problem with them letting him go. But Niner fans acting like good riddance, like somehow the Niners are better off for not having K1 Williams, that's crazy talk. This guy was a phenomenal run defender and played one of the most key roles on your defense. And you talked – you you're down there. You talk to any of these players, any of these coaches, D'Amico. These guys will tell you the real deal about K1 Williams. So this kiss off of K1 just because he's not a Niner anymore, that annoyed me this week. It's like – yeah. You know, it's once again, yeah. the Niners can do no wrong. Yeah. They didn't want K1. Oh, well, he must suck. No, he doesn't yeah. suck. You know, right? no. he may have lost a step in coverage, but he's still a hell of a football player. Far from this good riddance, you know. I'm all for upgrading K1 Williams, but they didn't do sure. that. Sure, they, they didn't do it. It's no, still a need. He was one of their most valuable guys. 
Yeah, I mean, he was the consistency, the rock. And I mean, him, Jimmy Ward, Jaquaski Tart, the vets in the middle of that secondary were the constants the last five years. Yeah. NorCal Troca says, who goes first, Jimmy Garoppolo or Baker? Niners are a joke now. Baker. Who's better? Baker. Who has upside? Baker. Who's younger? Baker. I mean, it's a no-brainer, man. Who's cheaper? Baker. Baker. Yeah, so. What do you think of the rumor today? Steelers, the if they, the rumor was that the Steelers will try to sign Baker if Baker gets released. Poor Mitchell Trubisky. <laughs> <laughs> he signed to be a backup and he doesn't even know it. Uh, yeah, why not? Why not? Give him a shot. Yeah. I'm not a big Baker Mayfield fan. I, I think it's his personality, though. It might be just – it might Too just many commercials. It's the commercials, commercials. The commercials to playoff win ratio. Oh. His sucks. If you have a ton of commercials and very few playoff wins, you need to do fewer commercials. He's one of these Heisman Trophy winners who was famous in college who think they're still famous now. It's like, nah, you're just a mediocre starting quarterback in the NFL. I don't like those. I've been famous since I was 20. It's like, who cares? I don't watch college football. You're not a celebrity to me. You're just the guy who makes the bad commercials and loses. Josh he's not a won. leader. He's not a leader he's either. Not a leader. OBJ suddenly wants to go back to Cleveland now that Baker's <laughs> going to be out of Cleveland. That's true. And, you know, Jimmy Garoppolo, the one thing you can say about him is that people like him. He's, people like him. Well, exactly. The players like him and they respect yeah. him. And I I thought Indy would go for him for that reason. But Indy found a Matt Ryan is a better better option. Worked out. Joshua Wyatt says if the Niners thought they'd be good next year, Jimmy Garoppolo would be gone. If they suck 2022 and gave up a winning quarterback for nothing, splits the fan base and the locker room. If the Niners thought they'd be good next year, Jimmy Garoppolo would be gone. If they suck 2022 and gave up a winning quarterback for nothing. Hmm. Hmm. I'm, okay. I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure if I agree with that. The, what they're um, afraid that like they tra trade Jimmy Garoppolo, he goes somewhere, wins, and that they lose with Trey Lance. That would be really, really unconfident. I don't know about that. I don't, I don't know that they have a lot of – I don't – I got to see their confidence in Trey, you know, before I'm going to say, yeah, they're confident in Trey. I got to see it. I got to see it first. Because right now it seems like they're not – they seem like they have Trey. They made the deal. But are they super – have great conviction that he's the guy? I don't know. I, I don't know about that yet. William says they, they won't name him the starting quarterback because his name is Trey. It's a good point. How could you name him starting quarter? He has a name. His parents gave him. That's fair. Yeah, Rafa said yeah. his name is Trey, drafted third overall. They won't let him play until his third year. <laughs> hey, Jed did say that uh, last year, though. We would be okay with keeping him on the bench for two years. Jed, what are you talking about? You know Thank what you. that you know what that was, though, Grant? What? That was really interesting. That was revealing. That showed their whole game plan. The whole game plan was we'll let him play this year. We'll let Jimmy play this year. We'll trade Jimmy next year. Yes. And I think the trade is part of the plan, which yes. is – and that, that means the return was part of the plan. Yes. And that means that they're, the reason they haven't pulled the trigger is because they can't get the return that they want. And they know – so they're going to wait. They're going to hold him right. until they get that return. I think they're going to cut him. I don't think they're going to cut him, but I think this is going to go right to the beginning of camp. Because they know they overspent on Trey Lance. And if they can get something back on Jimmy Garoppolo, they can say, well, technically, we didn't really give up three firsts and a third because we got this back. And right. it's part of the package, right? Because, I mean, the Rams gave up two second, two firsts, a third, and Jared Goff for Matthew Stafford. The Niners gave up three firsts, a third for Trey Lance, who I, I like, but college player. A freaking college player who wasn't going to number one or number two. So, yeah, they probably feel like they need to get something back from Jimmy. And they don't need to do anything until camp starts because you know and I know that the extensions for Debo and Bosa will be announced as they're walking from the tunnel to the Correct. practice field Correct. Um, in the works. first practice in July. So that's when they need the cap room. They don't need it today. No. They don't need it on draft day. They need it the first day of camp when they extend those two guys. Can they trade Jimmy Garoppolo in late July? Like what team is going to have $27 plus million in cap space at that point? Are they hoping for Carson Wentz part two where yeah, somebody three just, days yeah, into practice breaks down? Yeah. I mean, that I, if, they, if they're there, then that's a scary place. If they're waiting now on a somebody to break and that, you know, somebody's going to want Jimmy at 25 million, come off a shoulder surgery, man, they're not in a good place. If that's the case. Big Tim three says, I understand what you're saying about teams going all in, but there hasn't been any back-to-back -back Super Bowl champs since early two thousands. Right. Let's build to go back to back. Build to go back to back. How about just get one first? Yeah, I mean, you know. It's been I mean, 25 years. I'll say this. You know, I was talking about this earlier this week. What's the greatest run in the history of this organization? 
And people would say, well, it was 81 to the mid 90s. But if you look even closer, what's the greatest run? It was coming off of the Jerry draft in 80 in uh, 85 mm-hmm. or and and then the uh, the 86 draft yeah. where they traded back and got all these great depth yeah. pieces. They were yeah. great in 87. They won it in 88. They won it in 89. They almost won it in 90. They almost yeah. won three in a row. So to yeah. me, that's what they ought to be looking for in this draft. You don't have a one trade back, get a 12 to 15 person draft class and stock up your roster so that you can win. Cause you're probably not going to win this year with Trey Lance, but you may be able to win in year two of Lance or year three of Lance as the starter. So build up your depth in this draft by trading back and accumulating 15 picks and maybe 12 of them make your roster. Now you're loaded. William says if his name was, if his name was Lance, it would be different. Lance Trey. <laughs> Jamal says, I think they were pressured to trade up for Lance. Pressured by who? Not Jed. Jed? Did, was, is who? Yeah, I mean, did they trade up for Lance or did they trade up just thinking that it's a great quarterback draft and they didn't know where the guys were going to go? At that, at the point they made the trade, nobody had even worked out. Nobody had had their pro day. I don't think they really honestly knew where any of the quarterbacks would be slotted other than Trevor Lawrence was going one. And that they liked Zach Wilson or uh, Zach Wilson. So I I don't know that they traded up for Lance. I think they traded up th- seeing that there was Lawrence and Wilson and Lance and that there was three guys there. And if they got the third pick, they would get one of them. Chris that says, are we still afraid of pissing off certain players if they commit to Trey with Jimmy still on the team? I hope not. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, the, the, the locker room made it real clear last year. I think vets like George Kittle, Eric Armstead, have made it pretty freaking clear who they want to be the quarterback. And I don't think they're going to change their mind. So if you want to create a toxic situation, be my freaking guest, Kyle. I'm trying to help you. Ryan Jennifer Wood says, what about Jalen Hurd? Would you pursue for cheap or not? I don't think he's going to play football anymore, Ryan. Sorry to – people really <laughs> had high hopes for Jalen Hurd, but I think it's, I think the dream is over. Seriously, his agent, Doug Hendrickson, is a good buddy of mine. And, man, I, I, I didn't like that. I didn't like that move on the day of the draft. And, obviously, it doesn't look good now. My conspiracy theory is Greg Papa is behind the trays and ready. He's even said on radio he'd bring Jimmy back and hedge his bet that Lance isn't ready. That was Greg Papa, no. Well, I mean, yeah. I one, I you know, I love Greg, but yeah. he has he's what? cray cray on the Garoppolo stuff right now. I mean, it, he, he's talking about Jimmy bring Jimmy back because Jimmy is a Super Bowl quarterback. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if Greg knows something I don't know, but I, I don't remember Jimmy winning a, winning a Super Bowl. Uh, I don't view Jimmy as a Super Bowl quarterback. I view Jimmy as a guy who was in the Super Bowl because of a killer defense and an incredible surrounding cast and then wet the bed in that game to contribute to losing it. I don't see him as a Super Bowl winning quarterback. He's awful. He's not. In the Look at his numbers in the play. His quarterback rating is like 73. Carson says if I were Trey, I'd request a trade. It's a business. I can see why you would say that. Trey's being very patient, and I guess a certain part part of him feels like good situation. Trey Lance, I mean, excuse me, Kyle Shanahan, the supporting cast, but it must feel very confusing. He's twenty one years old to to come here and have the whole organization be like, actually, we don't want you that much. Then why'd you trade for me? What are you talking about? Why am I here? Why am I here? See, I think. See, I don't think there's any any discord behind the scenes because I think. Uh, all this kind of misdirection is all public misdirection. I think in when Kyle and John and they sit down with Trey and Carlton and Trey's mom and they talk about Trey, they're all in on Trey. I don't, I don't believe there's any, I don't, I think they feel like that they're selling that family on, Hey, you know what? We're going to put him in the, on the field. We're going to build this team around him. I, I don't think there's any indecision. I think all of that's a public stance to maintain the Jimmy Garoppolo trade value. I think they're all in on Trey privately. I'd like to think that they need to express that private pro- probably soon. Julio says, what up, Grant? It's been a minute, man. Work in school have been crazy for me. I blame the ownership for this quarterback chaos. Hold yourself accountable, Jed. Yeah, I, Eddie wouldn't let it happen. I mean, but I like, again, I like what you said. The buck doesn't stop with Jed. That's a great point. People need, need to remember that. It's not the same. I mean, he's no. the, he's managing the team, but Dr. John York and the mom, own the team yep, and right. he doesn't do, he can't just make any decision he wants. He has to check with them. Yep. Um, I really believe that. Now, if somebody wants to come and tell me that I'm wrong, uh, you know, I, I you think know, you're you right. got my digits. 
I think you're right, Jed. If you want to call into the show uh, Saturdays and Sundays, I do a call-in show. You're welcome to call in. It's a little bit long, uh, long of a <laughs> wait. Vicky, thank you for your donation. Joey says, didn't we technically only trade two first and a third for Trey? We still picked first to get him, so that would be a swap first and trade two extra, right? Well, the way I look is that, yeah, you swap that that pick for Trey, but then you spent it on Trey. So he cost you a first-round pick last year, this year, next year. Like Stafford cost the Rams a first round, two first-round picks. So trading, the, the verb trade kind of confuses it, but the cost was three firsts and a third as opposed to Stafford, who the cost was two firsts and a third in golf. Well, okay. I, I hate this this conversation. I've had Niner people come up to me. Well, they didn't tra- They didn't trade three number ones. Yes, well, you first did. First of all, you did. You did. You inve- Let's you look invested. at it this way. Yeah. You invested three number ones. He was your first round pick in 2021, your first round pick in 2022, and your first round pick in 2023. That's the facts. Right. You invested three you invested number that. ones. Yeah, in Trey Lance. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not. And I'm not even ripping you. And I'm not even telling you you made a wrong call. But let's not. Can he we at least have an agreement on the basics enough. of the yeah. of the trade? You invested three number ones in Trey. You yeah. had one. You traded two future ones to move up. Three number ones. One, two, three. Count, please, somebody. This is a point I wanted to bring up. What does it say that McVay is a ring and Kyle does it? What I want to ask you is if. If the the Rams front office and the Niners front office switched, and all of a sudden the people running the Rams are running the Niners right now, how would they have approached this offseason? Well, the Rams are tied to to that stadium, the cost yes. of that stadium. Yes. And and also, let's be honest, these are different situations. The Rams don't have a fan base. It's true. We saw that in week 18. That is true. So they needed to be in that Super Bowl. They need they're battling yeah. the Chargers for relevancy in their own city. They there's a bigger Niner fan base in LA than a Ram fan base. There's a bigger Raider fan base in LA than a Ram fan base. They needed to be all in and they and they knew the finances on the thing. So I think the Rams being all in has a lot to do with their stadium and the investment that they made in it. NorCal Troga says, here's $10 for that 60-second highlight video of Eric Armstead. Man, that's <laughs> hilarious. And I like that you misspelled his name. That's pretty funny to me. Sorry, Eric. They, they, they love you.